But if I back it up, is it fat enough? And when I throw it back, is it fast enough? Hey guys, and welcome back to Third Act. So this week, we're going to be reviewing The Hunchback of Notre Dame from La Jolla Palm View. And for those of you who watched our live stream yesterday on Instagram, which we filmed today, um, oh. you know that I'm super excited about this review because I truly do believe that this show showcases the talent that Palm View and Juarez Lincoln have. Um, we had never seen a show from Juarez Lincoln before, and this was a joint effort between both schools. Um, so I'm super excited because the show is really, really amazing, in my opinion. I'm just ready to start talking about it. I mean, I, I, I don't think we've stopped talking about it since we saw it. Um, so it's not going to be any different to us, but, um, let's start with the tech reviews. For me, I'm not a big, like, tech person, and you guys know this, like, from the videos that we've done, but I really did enjoy a lot of their tech elements for the show. Um, I thought the lighting was spectacular. Uh, I enjoyed their set. However, I do wish that it was a bit bigger, because I felt like it was very centered, and it was kind of like, there was like space on the sides. Do you understand? Like, hopefully we can get pictures of this because I think you'll like understand hopefully what I'm trying to talk about. Cause they do have such a big stage. Mm -hmm. And the set took up quite a bit, but there was like, I don't know, like I, I think I wanted a little bit more like levels, but their set was beautiful. I mean, I think- Oh and, yeah, and it, it was stunning. It was a um, dynamic set, it mm -hmm. moved. Um, so I love it, that the, yeah. the stairs moving and everything So beautiful. Yeah, so for those of you who didn't see the show there was two staircases that went up to the bell tower mm -hmm. and um, They were on wheels. So at times the gargoyles would move it with Quasimodo on it or Quasimodo and Esmeralda um, And they would put it together to symbolize like the balcony where they're like looking off you know on top of the world and then there was one where it was just him and it was like to show the movement and now we're moving to a different part of this the story i loved how that set moved um and it wasn't a lot of movement but it it was you were able to see mm -hmm. like the vision of like where they were and yeah. how it moved and everything and i really enjoyed that the costumes that stood out to me the most were um eddie's quasimodo's yeah costume because it was very true to the Disney but also true to the Broadway show yeah. and I liked it a lot I liked it so much and Esmeralda's costume really stood out for me and Daniela looked beautiful in that costume yeah. she looked stunning I agree I, I did enjoy Quasimodo's costume and I again this was the first like production of Hunchback that I had ever seen oh that's right so it was cool to watch the transformation happen on stage and oh I yeah that, I know that other productions have done that I love the the rope that they had yes for the bells he pulled the rope and then like swung from it and he said that he added that like that day that that normally wasn't what happened but he tweeted about he tweeted about it a few days later and he said that it was just something that he decided to add mm -hmm. like into the the show that day and so I, I thought it was that. yeah I thought it was really cool I loved all the skirts that the girls had like they were so flowy and whenever they would have like a big number like um topsy-turvy or um rhythm of the tambourine like their their skirts were so beautiful it was so colorful mm -hmm. like it added to the fact that their set didn't have too much color mm -hmm. um which wasn't a problem at all but it was a good contrast, I think, with the girls yeah. and the townspeople having like colors on their mm -hmm. on their body and then against the, you know, neutral looking set. Which is I a think. classical thing to do with Hunchback. Yeah. And I love it. I loved the gargoyles. Oh, yeah. I like how they did that. Um, I know that some productions choose to just do like more subtle take on the gargoyles and the statues. I like the subtle take. See, I, I enjoy the subtle take. But I liked this a little more just because of how big the auditorium is. In a smaller theater, like let's say the Camille, the subtle take would work 
because mm. it's a smaller theater, more intimate setting. Yeah. But for those of you who have been to the La Jolla Auditorium, it's, it's huge. Huge, yeah. Um, it has a balcony, so, I mean, they they kind of played, for you know everyone wherever you were sitting, you were able to see, and I at least that's how I took it, and I and I liked that they had like masks mm. on big sticks, and the gargoyles and statues were, you know, moving it as they were talking and moving. And I like that a lot. They really know how to use their stage, like their space. And I really appreciate that. Because some people can be intimidated by that big of a stage. Yeah. And they didn't. Like, they were so comfortable up there. It was yeah. so beautiful. And Oh, my God. Blast's costume. Oh. That was... Oh, my God. It was so beautiful. It reminded me of the cartoon. So, let's continue with performance elements. Now, there are a few things that I want to talk about. Um, the goat. All right. We'll talk about the animal first. I'm going to pull up a picture of me holding on to this goat that they pulled out in the middle of the show. And I was in tears. Um, Love that goat. I, I hope it's doing well. I enjoyed a lot their ensemble work. I think this is one of the shows, and I think we said it with the Robert Vela one, but of course I didn't see that one. This show requires a great ensemble. Mm -hmm. And they pulled that off, like for sure. I mean, I really do think that joining the two schools was a good choice mm -hmm. because it was, it gave the effect of a town, in yeah. my opinion. Um, different interactions happening back, you know, in the background, um, how they interacted with each other, all of that stuff. I really do think that it added an extra level of, like, performance yeah, to I the agree. show. Vocally. Wow. It was very strong. Um, it was very strong. And I, oh my god, I applaud you guys for that because it was breathtaking how in sync you guys were. I'm I, excited to see their Palm Award performance. Me too. So excited to see their performance. I'm excited to see both performances because both Hunchbacks are nominated. Amen. They're both just gonna take it right. Blow us out of the water. Like, this was such a perfect pick yeah. for these two schools to do the show. I 100% like, agree. I 100% agree. Such a perfect pick. And yeah. I remember when we talked about it in the summer with them. Yeah. Like, at first, I was a skeptic. Me too. I was very, I was very like, well, it requires a lot of ensemble. It requires a lot of singing. Like, you guys need to be on it. Like, I remember thinking all these things, and they proved me so wrong. Like, I remember the same moment, and I was like, all right, like, let's see how it goes. Like, you know, like, I, I like when schools step out of the comfort zone and do like a different show that mm -hmm. not many people have undertaken. Yeah. Or haven't in a while. I'm gonna go back to what I said in the live. Like, I'm really rooting for you guys. I really am. Me and too. I know that may be controversial, but um, I really am rooting for you guys because we've seen how much each of you has grown over the course of like, what, two years now? A year and a half? Um, it's. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. I wanna give a shout out to your director slash directors because I believe there are two. Yes. Um, and I just, I applaud them so much for for their program. I love that picture. That picture gives me life. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Let's start with vocals. Back to ensemble. Chef kiss. Um, it was beautiful. It was. It really was. Um, I enjoyed every ensemble piece. Um, I thought it was beautifully done. Um, but I do want to talk about, and I'm sorry, because I know you're probably gonna go off too, but I do want to talk about Daniela. If you're watching this, I, we, the world, adores you. And um, I hope you know that because, <laughs> girl, I, I can't, I can't, I literally can't. Um, there wasn't one thing about your performance that I didn't like. I, I truly am saying that. And not even just vocally, but we're going to talk about vocals because that's what I'm talking about. I loved every minute. I felt every single emotion that you had on that stage in every single word that you sang 
and I truly think that that is a gift that you should hold on to for the rest of your life because it is so hard to do that mm -hmm. it is so hard to do that I have to talk about your acting <laughs> I I remember I remember watching the recording of the Adams family and I was like yes give me life give me spice I love it and then this character it's like she made the perfect balance of an Esmeralda, which is the kindness of Esmeralda, her strong, strong personality, the fighter in her. She had that in the moments that she needed to have that, but she knew when to be soft and she knew when to be kind. And it was every time that she was with Quasimodo. Dani, I love you. You're officially one of my favorite actresses in the valley. I hope you know that. Wherever you go, I'm gonna go see you. Hopefully you two are so we can go together. Go ahead. Next for vocals, I wanna talk about Eddie. The silence that you just heard was me throughout the entire show. I was speechless, speechless. I have never heard anyone in the Valley, aside from professionals that have come to perform here, that was so flawless in their vocal ability. And I'll say that out there so everybody can hear that because I'm going to say it. I'm really going to say it. And, and <gasps> You're going to say it? I'm going to say it with I'm you. I'm going to say it and I feel like I'm going to get crap for it. But you know what? I want, I want everybody to know watching this video that I love each and every one of you equally. But Eddie is one of the reasons I think Palm View deserves to be recognized this year because he has been nominated three times for the Palm Awards in the acting category and it's his time. This is his Leo moment. I really do feel like that. I truly, truly have so much faith in this kid. Like I, I can't. Like I, you are just magnificent to watch on stage, magnificent to talk to afterwards and just an overall genuine person that just, I don't know how you do it. And I'm jealous, like really, <laughs> because you are just an effortless performer, like in general. Not to get... I'm not trying to get political with the No, 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 me neither. But, but I'm not trying to get religious, but that's God's work. That's truly all God's work in him. I, I hope I agree. that you and your school get recognized for that one of the voices that has improved a lot is Lazaro's his voice that we're still talking about vocals, vocals but um his voice has improved a lot and I liked it I liked his performance a lot very creepy I was very upset but I still love you as a person his acting has always been great in my opinion yeah absolutely um, so it was really cool to see him take on an evil character because I don't think we've seen that before one more person that I want to talk about uh, Luis Hernandez, who played Phoebus. I saw him in The River Bride, which was their play that they did this year. That's right, that's right. And it was the first time, I believe, that I had seen him act that much, like where he had lines and like had a bigger part. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued then. I was like, okay, I like this. I like this, let's see where this goes. And then he did Hunchback. And I was very, very impressed. I think he embodied the character very well. Um, and it was really cool to see him in the front lines. Uh, I know you had your little rant about Eddie, but I just want to say this. I don't think anyone has ever made me cry that much. Wow. And I cry a lot. She does. And the minute you stepped out and I heard out there, I was so 
connected to your character and you have such a way with connecting with an audience that it's incredible same thing with the the entire ensemble like acting as an ensemble they were storytellers like they guided that story and even the gargoyles and the statues like acting wise i was very blown away by everyone me too like that was like a 9.5 out of 10 for me so i think it's time javi we haven't talked about our favorite songs no i haven't so why don't you go ahead and tell the world your favorite song my favorite song from this musical the specific musical was top of the world anyway <laughs> um my favorite me song too okay i got that from the playbill throw <laughs> um that was my favorite song clearly it was yours too um probably for the same reasons um it was flawless um point blank <laughs> there was beautiful harmonies in that song and the stairs moved the stairs moved in the middle I of the song, you. and I loved it. I was here for it. I Everything. Know. They started so moving, and I was like... So much was happening. Everyone, and hold on. I was just blown away. It was my favorite moment in the entire show, and I would go back just to watch that. My favorite moment of that song specifically was when Danny kissed him on the cheek and then got up. Because it was so... It's, so, it's such a subtle gesture... But the fact that he's never had any human interaction like that, and that was his first interaction, just makes your heart so warm. I think my favorite part was the sign language. Oh, that that which is throughout the throughout, show. Yeah, I but was a. I enjoyed oh. how she did it too. Yeah, she was learning with him. Yeah, and I really enjoyed that. It was a very intimate moment with Quasimodo and Esmeralda, and I. I ate it up. I mean, I think their chemistry... They've been playing opposites for so long. I know. Their chemistry was just undeniable. To our diamond this week. Those of you watching know that usually... <laughs> we don't talk about the diamond when we're talking about people who stood out to us because they get their own moment at the end of the episode. Um, so, I'll give you about five seconds to take a guess who you think our diamond is this week. <laughs> Okay. All right. Our diamond this week is none other oh. than Blas Loya. Um, he had me from the moment he walked on oh, to the moment God. he walked off. It was a beautiful performance. He guided us through the entire musical, and I was holding on to every single word that he was saying. And just his movements, mm -hmm. his movements, and his his theatricality and like his you know his it I was loved so it. beautiful yes I so expressive i loved his costume i loved his makeup i loved his singing and i loved how he just like walked on the stage you know like i just loved everything about his performance and it was so detailed and intricate in my opinion because you know what it is actors like that that have that kind of power once they walk on stage you can't take your eyes off of them and you know that they're there and you can't take your... That's how I was that night. And then you took the goat out again. Put up the picture of the goat, Daniela. Yes, Third that time. goat. I... It was... So beautiful. It was such a beautiful rendition of the character. My heart's so happy. I'm so happy. I'm very proud of you. I'm going to start crying. Yeah, I mean, that's all we have for you guys today. Um, this was clearly one of our favorites. Coming up. So tomorrow, you will be able to begin pre-ordering the very first third act merch. A few of you have mentioned that we should start doing that, so we wanted to see what Test we would the do. Waters. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna try it out with our very first T-shirt. So the design of the T-shirt will be wherever Daniela wants to place it. Da! <laughs> And um, you can pre-order those shirts starting tomorrow, like I said, $15. So all the information for our Cash App will be in the graphic, wherever they place it. When you Cash App us, that you put your name, uh, the shirt or how many shirts you want, the size, 
and your email or contact information that we can get to you, whether that's your Twitter handle, your Instagram handle, um, Facebook, or um, I prefer not phone numbers just because I don't know how public Cash App is. I know that with Venmo, you can like see, see yeah. transactions between people and I don't want everybody's phone numbers to be out there. Mm -hmm. So um, you can also always uh, message us on any one of our social medias mm -hmm. and say, hey, um, I want a shirt this is my contact information because these shirts are for you guys and we just want you to have a little bit of us um with you whenever you watch the videos whenever you're in school <laughs> go to rehearsal stuff like that um so yeah stay tuned for that all right guys that's all we have for you today thank you so much for watching this video um we're beyond excited we're almost coming to the end of our season um and that's a little bittersweet how many more videos do we have I want to say we have about four or five <gasps> after this one, so I'm not wow. including this one. Um, I will be posting another graphic um, with the upcoming reviews oh, yeah. um, that'll be posted on Monday. So look out for that, so you can be up to date and get ready to be prepared for your video. But thank you so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye. I know you have a recording. I know you have a recording and you still haven't sent it to me and I'm very upset. So I know H is listening to me. I know Eddie's listening to me. I know Danny's listening to me. I know every every one of you is listening to me. All right. Send it to someone's upset. 956. No. 897.